Hello and welcome to yet another YouTube video here on this channel. In today's video we are diving into Microsoft Loop and there are basically three things we are going to cover. It is uh, what's new in the Microsoft Loop 2.0 update, which is a new update we got. So that is the first thing. The second thing we are going to talk about is the different use cases of Microsoft Loop. And the last thing we are going to talk about is why does this application even exist? What's the point of having Microsoft Loop? So let's start with some of the things that are new. And there are uh, one thing uh, or, or there is one thing I can't actually show you that is new, but I will go through the things that I can actually show you. So main thing we are getting is actually the new sidebar here. Uh, this has always been here. This is a newer uh, and this is new. So if you press create here, you have the ability to create a page, a link, page in ideas, a new workspace. So this simply just creates a new page uh, like this and I can give it a title like this. That is the easiest way to just create a new page. There are also one other way to create a new page. This is also uh, a new uh, newer feature. This hasn't been here all always. Uh, you can actually do backslash a new sub page like this. So I can call this a test space. And that is basically because uh, the organization inside of Microsoft Loop is workspaces, pages, and sub pages. Uh, and you have databases as well to add some structure uh, in the organization. But basically, this is how you organize. So we have the new like backslash and make a new sub uh, page, which, which is a feature that makes this uh, much easier to use. Uh, we still have some uh, minor UI uh, UX issues, but I will get back to that later. Uh, apart from uh, having the ability to add a new page, we can now add a new link as well. So I could add a, a link to something. Uh, let's actually just add a link to my Melanote board uh, like this. Uh, and I can go back in here and I can paste it like this. And I can just call this Melanote. Actually, uh, Microsoft Loop Tutorial is a good name. This is actually where I am hosting the script I'm looking at. So I can easily add this. It will add as a link. I love the fact that we get the icon as well. And I can click this and it will open up my um, script. I can go ahead and I can delete this as well. This also works uh, if you wanted to paste like something from a different workspace. So I can share a page link to this. This is actually from a different workspace. Let's allow it to share. Uh, back to the YouTube test space, I can actually go ahead, press create new, add link, and I can paste a link like this, and I can just add the link in here as well. Uh, now you can see that um, this home uh, right here has uh, this link icon next to it. And what's cool about this way of doing it is that you can easy, easily see uh, if one of your loop pages is hosted on this workspace, it is from this workspace or it is from another workspace and just pasted into this one. Uh, so that is a really neat feature. and. One of the main uh, reasons I think Microsoft Loop exists, again, more on that later. Uh, we also have uh, pages in ideas. So you have this ideas tab right here, which can function sort of like an inbox inside of many other applications. So inside of here, uh, whenever I have an idea for a social media post, I put it in here and uh, when the idea is sort of ready to be shared, I actually uh, move it into one of the workspaces. I use Microsoft Loop uh, at work. So that is basically how I do it. When I have an idea or something that the rest of the team uh, needs to know at some point, but it isn't properly worked out, I actually add it into uh, my uh, ideas here. So you can easily just, uh, create a new page in ideas here. What I dislike about this is that there is no easy way to add a new idea 
problem here, I can jump into my inbox, uh, which is an idea I've already created. And I can, when I'm actually done with this, I can easily add this to workspace. Again, this is a new like user interface thing uh, we got. So I can easily add this to a uh, workspace. But one thing this is lacking is like a plus sign somewhere here. Uh, or beneath this, like we have in our, if I jump into my workspaces, I have this create a new page here. I want this to exist inside of here as well, but having the ability to easily move this into workspace is great. So it is going forward. It is just going forward a little too slowly for my liking, but I tend to be impatient. Um, back to this create button. So here you can press create and add uh, a page in ideas and I can just call this, let's say this was a loop video which I wanted to make but uh, I have uh, to script it out and at least put some bullet points inside of here before I share it with someone. Uh, just as an example, uh, I could uh, do that and then I could just add this to workspace and I could choose the workspace I want to add this in. A really neat feature. Another cool thing about this idea is, is that you can actually uh, use um, templates inside of here as well. These work basically like uh, like your normal uh, loop pages, uh, but they are a little different since they are private. That's like the main difference. They are yours um, and not something you would necessarily share with the team. That's the first thing. Like you can see this one is private. Uh, this one isn't shared with anyone. Um, and that's just uh, how uh, this uh, like works and put it into my... Uh, personal social media workspace. Here you have the loop video and it gets pasted in like a link uh, and it still lives here. So that is also another thing I would want to Microsoft to change is to uh, actually remove this from my ideas when I move them into here. Uh, just minor things. Then we have our workspaces. You can now see your workspaces here as a list as well. Before the only way to do it was uh, like this. Um, so uh, the only way you could see your workspaces was through this home menu. We also have recent component and pages and we now have ideas as well. Uh, so that is also something uh, new. Uh, last thing we get here is that you can create new workspaces right from within here. Uh, and uh, this also means that Microsoft Loop is now like out of uh, the beta stage and into becoming like a real product. Uh, and now they've changed the amount of uh, workspaces you can have. You can now have many more workspaces. I think it's 250. Uh, per person uh, and the storage also counts to, uh, towards your total team storage if you uh, if you use this as a team like I'm using. I think I have a business Microsoft account. I'm pretty sure I have a business Microsoft account uh, but that's like the general uh, of this. Um, I do like a lot of the things that Microsoft has done to this. One of the major issues with this application before has been the UI UX, as I've mentioned, still a couple of issues. The other issue I've had, and this uh, I've only experienced uh, at my uh, day job, when I do make a table like this, or it is a database, but they call it a table, when this uh, database or table uh, stores too much information, the whole page becomes really, really laggy. And uh, that has been an issue in many applications. Many cloud-based applications have the same issues because uh, they are cloud-based. That is one of the things that you have to like give up when uh, you choose to use uh, a cloud-based application. But I've never seen it be as slow in things like Notion, Capacities, any type is local first, so that doesn't count. Bacoda is another one. Uh, I haven't actually seen the applications uh, be as slow as, uh, as um, 
as Microsoft Loop is when uh, the databases store too much information. So uh, that is probably something they will need to fix. Uh, mine has like, there are 30 things uh, inside of here, but I have written a lot of social media scripts that are stored inside of my database. Uh, so mine is kind of big, which makes the whole like experience of it slow. Uh, that is all one major thing I would like them to fix. Uh, and I also would like them to fix some of the minor issues I've mentioned previously in this video. Uh, backslash functionality is still great. Uh, some of the older things like the planner integration is amazing. Uh, Jira Trello is good as well, image record video. So a lot of great things. I also do like the communication tab here where you can actually use labels um, inside of your workspace. That is also a neat feature and that uh, gets me to my point of uh, the use cases of Microsoft Loop. So I think there are two, two major use cases of this application. The first one is uh, as a company wiki tool. So if I just create a new page right here uh, and I open the template gallery, we have a lot of like different templates and the templates aren't necessarily too good. Uh, some of them are good, but you will probably have to make your own, but the templates actually show us what Microsoft Loop wants this application to be, which is really important. So here we have a uh, a product wiki uh, where you can see your wiki pages, you can see relevant links, you can see the goals. Uh, so use this template to collect all things related to a product in one place. And I think that one of the like major use cases uh, for Microsoft Loop is actually just a simple wiki tool. It doesn't even have to be simple. It can be a huge wiki tool for you and your team and even your entire company like that's the first major use case the second major use case is uh, as a project management tool because we do have planner and we do have um, we do have project for the web as well um, and we microsoft has done a good job at implementing some of the some of the things we would want and expect from uh, a project management tool. Uh, but one thing it is lacking, uh, if you compare it to things like Notion, things like um, Coda, uh, there are others as well, Confluence is another one, is the fact that those applications allow you to build your own workflows. And that is exactly what we are getting with uh, with Microsoft Loop, we get the ability to build our own workflows uh, as teams. Uh, so my workflow, my team's workflow might be different from yours. And with this application that feels a lot like a no cool code tool, we can actually start to build our own project manage, uh, management tool. And that's why I think they both have like Kanban boards and task lists and team uh, retrospective here, but they also have the planner integration. And why I think they ha have both, uh, even though I just said that I think one of the major use cases, as you also can see in the templates, uh, is uh, for uh, project management and just management in general. Um, I think they have still added the planner integration because Microsoft needed a tool to like get all of the different Microsoft applications we have to talk together. So we have SharePoint, we have Teams, we have uh, even Microsoft uh, Whiteboard, we have Microsoft Designer, which I recently found out about. So we have a lot of different Microsoft tools, Microsoft applications, and this can function sort of like a consolidating tool. So let's say I like to work in Teams uh, like many people do. I have my planner board in Teams. I use Teams a lot to navigate. I can embed that same planner board here. So it will be available for the whole team inside of here as well. Uh, but what's even more important is that uh, I can interact with it 
in other applications, I can interact with my Microsoft Loop components in Teams. I can interact with the planner board in Teams. I can interact with uh, everything I make inside of Loop. I can interact with other places than Loop, which is important since people choose different application to do the work. It can also function as sort of a front end for uh, your SharePoint, which is an issue that a lot of people um, have is that SharePoint can feel a little complicated uh, and might not have the most beautiful uh, UI UX. Uh, this looks more beautiful and you can actually add uh, add uh, documents inside of here. And another great point about this is that one document can live multiple places. So the same document can live multiple places, uh, which removes the issue people might have with uh, version controls and different versions of applications diff of applications i mean of documents living in different folders which is an issue that i know a few businesses have so i think that is one of the reasons the second reason is ai and um, when i talked about what's new inside of um inside of Microsoft uh, Loop. I didn't talk about a lot of the new AI integrations and Copilot integrations we have gotten. So, uh, and that is simply because I don't have Copilot for 365 because it is expensive and I'm a single person with uh, paying for uh, the business plan of Microsoft. But now we get uh, like uh, Microsoft Copilot in the sidebar here uh, where you can see my mouse. You can chat to it like you would do with this Bing chat. It works quite similarly to that. We have exactly the same interface. So this would look exactly the same. The only difference would be that it is Microsoft for 365. So that is the first thing we get. You also get like, uh, where my mouse is right now, you get a co-pilot icon uh, where you can just press that and you can actually interact with co-pilot and get it to write things for you in that way. And what is really important in this new age uh, of uh, AI is to have as much uh, information consolidated uh, at one place as possible. We have notion like coming out with mail and calendar to have more information stored in the same place notions ai can interact with your documents inside of google docs so they are all the um, major players in this space are trying to consolidate everything into one place for that uh, specific reason um, because the more information you have inside of your workspace the better the AI experience becomes. So that is the other um, thing I uh, think that is really important to Microsoft is uh, to have something like this so people don't jump to applications like Confluence or like Notion, which are major players in different spaces. So Confluence are oft, uh, is often together with Jira uh, for uh, more uh, software based teams so people that work in uh, technical fields while notion is really popular in creative fields a lot of like uh, youtubers uh, use that application i know a lot of uh, people that work uh, in graphic design and uh, marketing use uh, notion a lot so uh, different spaces but the point is the same like um Microsoft needs those people to put more information inside of Microsoft so that Microsoft Copilot can become better and in general people will then choose Microsoft over other applications. I hope that made uh, sense. I have talked like tried to talk really quickly through this but uh, I tend to talk too much uh, since I am uh, I really care about productivity applications, which is really, really weird. Uh, but anyways, thank you for following along. Uh, it has been almost 20 minutes. So thank you so, so much. If you're interested in productivity applications, tech and mental health, please do subscribe. I try to post videos as often as I can. And I uh, just, I feel at least I feel like I'm 
getting better and better with these videos. Anyways, thank you so, so much for watching today's video. Any questions, leave them down below and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video.